see on the ASA firewalls the basic routing configurations. Now at this point of time I expect you to know the basic concepts of the routings. So I'm not going to cover what is routing and what are the different types of routings. So most of these things you, you already did in the CCN routing switching. So I expect you to know the basic routing concepts like conflicting static routes or default routes. Now in this section we'll only see uh, what are the configuration changes or change in the commands in the ASA firewall compared to the router configurations. Now basically ASA needs to be configured with some routing protocols like maybe this is my head office connecting to some internet and you're connecting to your router and then connecting to my LAN and maybe this head office router is also having some connectivity to multiple branch offices. Now if a user sitting here is trying to access a Yahoo server, now I want all the traffic between these branch offices, uh, if a user sitting here want to go to internet, it should go via head office. Now based on that, you need to make sure that this ASA firewall along with all the routers must be, uh, must know each other because when, when this router generates a traffic, sends a default, through default routing, it reaches the router and Rather forward to the ASA, ASA do some kind of inspection, forward it back to the internet and the traffic when it comes back the ASA should know how to return the packet to which branch office the ASA should know. So which means we must be running some kind of routing on the ASA as well along with uh, along with the routers. So we can, we can use any of the routing, of course dynamic routing protocols are much more scalable solutions. Now we can, we can do static routing in general on the ASA by using slightly different commands like these are the commands on the routers. Now on the on the ASA we need to say route, the command starts with route and then we need to tell whether you are writing a static route towards the LAN or towards the internet. So if you are writing a static route towards the LAN then we, we give a name if the name of that interface, we need to specify the name of the interface, the inside and then whatever the destination network. Uh, destination network may be just 10.1.1.network. Uh, let's say if you go, if you assume that this is my LAN and then the subnet mask and then the next stop IP address. So likewise if you are adding a static route on the default route towards the next, towards the other router, let's say now, now verification wise we use show route command instead of show IP route and you'll see a route displayed as a static whatever the static route you write and then on which interface it is facing towards and then of course you can ping from the router 1 to the LAN interface. Now this actually it can be anything either 1.1.1.1 or 10.1.1.1 whatever it is you should be able to ping so that, that, that confirms that we do have some reachability. Now likewise if you are using default routes like mostly on the ASA we, we must configure any unknown traffic should be sent to the internet. And then we, we, we say route outside because we are routing towards the outside interface and 0000, zero, zero, zero. we can simply write 10, 10 one, zero also in the ASA instead of writing four zeros and then the next stop IP v for address. Now likewise we need to, verifications are still the same. If you are using any dynamic routing protocols there is no difference in the commands, almost the same commands what we use on the routers. Uh, on the ASA also we use the same commands with RIP, uh, verification wise we use show, show route command, EHRP also we use the same commands, same modes in the ASA firewall when you compare with the routers and likewise verification commands are also similar like instead of saying show IP EHRP neighbors we use show EHRP neighbors and show route commands, you see the routes will be learning as D. And also with OSPF also we use the same thing but the difference is in OSPF we generally use wildcard mask inside the routers if you if you do the configuration on the routers but in ASA firewall we don't use wildcard mask instead we use a subnet mask. So not only in OSPF in the next classes when we discuss ACLs like OSPF and ACLs uses wildcard mask in the routers but whereas here we use subnet mask. Now that's the difference, rest of the configurations are still the same. Now mostly if you are doing some kind of redistributions, also the same thing, the commands are almost the same. Okay, so in the workbook I have documented some uh, basic routing routing labs, so you can verify with them, 
configuration and verifications but at the end you will be using any one of the routing protocol depending upon your network requirements.